Yes, you're supposed to hear me. Do you have, um, everything's working on my end, but I don't see the fact that you have um, voice or um, computer connection. <laughs> Let's see. Hi, now I can see you. You're still waiting? Okay. Um, everything on my end is okay. Um,
Hi. Hi, Brenda. How are you? Good. good. I'm sorry. I, I'm not sure what is the problem. I think I used the BATX before, and I didn't have any issues with the, with the audio. Well, sometimes Safari works and sometimes it doesn't. I've had that same problem with Safari, and I'm not – Safari and Chrome, for some reason, I get the same issue. I get the same issue when I'm using Uber Conference, so I don't know. Okay. Can you hear me uh, like this? Well, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. I can hear you, too. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, super. So um, it's a little complicated getting you the data that you want um, because because MOOCs aren't uh, uh, aren't tracked with analytics very well because of the nature of the MOOCs. I can give you each individual section. I can give you copies of what we have, um, but I just need you to t tell me how much information you want. Like, okay, so I backed this all up to the very first MOOC we ran, which was a technical math MOOC that started June 23rd, 2014. And I think that's probably some of the information you saw in one of the presentations. Canvas has also changed how they actually give the analytics. So on this one, the question breakdown, even though we had um, um, 686 students who actually enrolled in the course, approximately 180 actually touched the MOOC. But only 65 actually um, took the, the actual breakdown to give us the information. So it's just like, you know, um, and tell me if this is too small for you or not, if you can't read anything on this. Um, so like the first question is, what's your primary reason for taking an open online course? 11% um, said they like the format and then it goes on down. 49% said I enjoy learning about topics that interest me. Then, like, the next question that was asked was, not everyone has the same participation on learning goals. We welcome diversity. What type of online learner best describes you? And 51% said passive participant. So that already tells me, like, when we actually revamp the course, it's just like, okay, they don't want any, they don't want to be bugged by the instructor. They just want to do it themselves. 37% said they wanted active participant. So that's when we actually... Um, Changed a little, changed it up a bit so that we actually reduce the amount of instructor time. But we always responded to those. We touch the students every week with like an announcement or and a blast email. Um, but we basically let them go on their own. And then how many hours a week? Less. Uh, most of it expected forty between two and four percent, or twenty percent was between one and two hours. So I can get that kind of information for you. And especially where, like where they live, um, what's their gender, how old they are, um, and I before prior to um, and then they have like answered. I could not export this information. But are you recording this session? Can I yes. like, view the video? Yes, as long as I yes. have access you know, so I, I can see what, what is in there, so I can use it. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. So we'll go through every single course. If you come across something that you want a deeper answer to, just let me know. Okay. So for some reason, the, the way the yeah. way this question was answered, there was 57 people answered, how will this course help you meet your professional personal goals? It was a fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. um, when I actually go to SpeedGrader, they have nothing. So somehow when Canvas changed how they were actually looking for it, mm -hmm. it, didn't, it didn't bring in that field. So we, you know, it's pretty much useless to us. Okay. But, um, but yeah, I, we can go through every single section, and I'm recording this so I can send the recording back to you so you can look at it, or you can call me and say, okay, well, what was this on this sec section? Does that work for you? Absolutely. As, as long as I have this recording and I can see it, um, that's fine. I think that's all I need. Just one question. What you show me now, is it, uh, what period is that for? Is it 2015? This is only for the section that's a five-week course, quarter two, 2014, 
for the section that ran Jan, uh, June 23rd through the end of July. So each yeah. section has their own data analytics. They don't compile them all. Mm -hmm. Yes, I get it. Yes, okay. Okay. Uh, and you said this uh, for 2015, it's a little bit different than uh, you had in the presentations, right? Each section will be different. The presentation I gave you was based on um, uh, quarter two and quarter four of 2014. Yeah. But when I made the presentation, Canvas had a different, they did an upgrade over the winter holiday, so all the reports changed a bit. Mm -hmm. So they're not gonna look the same. Before you had like a stair step, you, you actually had like the stair step here, and it actually told you what was going on. Now they've got it in these little bubbles. Mm -hmm. uh, is it just how the information presented or the- Correct. Correct. Well, that's okay. So it doesn't really matter how it is presented. As long as I can, you know, see what is there and see the figures, that will be Okay. Fine. And basically all it is is user supplied demographic data based on what the questions were asked, but it was not required of everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And, uh, but with regard to who, who enrolled and how many um, completed, so it is what you sent me earlier, right? So those figures are not based on the questions that... We, we can't count completers because MOOCs, by the nature of being a MOOC, they can drop in, drop out, they can touch one thing and come out. Uh, for the technical math, the, the qualification for receiving a certificate was to actually pass every single assessment at 80% or higher. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And they got certificates, right? So uh, that's why I'm asking. So you, you Wait, say that again. And those, they, they got the certificate if, if they passed 80% or better. Correct. But it's not like we, you could say, well, 10% of quarter two got a certificate because we had enrollments of 686, about 180 actually touched the course somehow. And of that 180, only I think 12 or 13 actually earned a certificate by meeting the guidelines. But that doesn't necessarily mean everybody else was less successful. It just means that because of the nature of the MOOC, they got what they needed and chose not to do anything else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, I understand. Okay. I, that's that's fine. So you know, as we said, you know, if you show me every course um, for this year, you know, you had already twice, right? Each course run twice. Am I correct? Each course. Well, the technical math course has run five times, employability has run four times, and the PLA has run twice. It's run every, every quarter. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So okay. from now until the end of 2016, it'll run every single quarter. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Great, so let, let's do that. Let's just go okay. through everything. And so this is the first quarter that it was run in 2014. So then I'm going to go ahead and we're going to choose the second quarter it was run. <clears throat> so, <sighs> oops, sorry, wrong place. And they also have, well, I guess I should have done that before. Hold on. Um, let me see if this is any valuable data. Um, technical math. They do do an end user survey. Uh -huh. And I'll 
record that for you because that actually might help out. Um, Part of it is about Canvas itself. Mm -hmm. Part of it is, is how do you feel about courses? How did you actually access the, the device? Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that may be useful as well. And I might actually, I'm trying to see if they actually, nope, okay. So we've got that done. Um, so then we're going to go for the second quarter it was actually run. And this is the beginning survey mm -hmm. where it talks about the demographics of um, information, basic demographics, and then I'll go ahead and go into the end user survey. Mm -hmm. So the reasons. And then we'll go ahead and go into the information from the end user survey. Okay. And as long as I know what you're wanting, um, if you find this boring, me just clicking through this, um, you're welcome to tell me that just send you the recording after I click through all this because there will be um, five, eight. So, uh, yes, uh, do you, how do I know, for example, looking at this, uh, how do I know which period it covers? I will send it to you um, exactly in the order that I've got it listed um, down, and then you'll see that fact that mm -hmm. at the top here, there's a C in 1685, and that actual gives the course code to the actual quarter. And I'll send you that. Okay. Okay. That's what, yeah, yes. It will be good to know, you know, what. Can you even see that number? 1685, yes, I can. Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure it's clear on the recording because otherwise, um, It'll be so small you won't be able to see it. It's relatively small, yes, on my screen, but uh, I'm usually using a computer with a larger monitor. So okay. I think if you open it there, I will be fine. Even this way, even this one, I can see perfectly. Okay, That's all right. So that was the second quarter in um, 2014. We're going to go ahead and go for um, the first quarter in 2015, and we're still working on the technical math. Mm -hmm. um, and for uh, when is the paper actually going to be done? The reason I'm asking is because we have a brand new section that's starting um, July 20th, mm -hmm. and I was just going to um, make sure that if you're still going to be collecting data at that point in time, I could actually yeah. enroll you in the course and you could you could actually get this data yourself. Uh -huh. the, the whole data, right? I'll have access to everything, not only to the one that you will enroll me to? No, they're only per section. I can't uh, backward enroll you in all the sections that have already run, only what's going forward. Okay, okay, no problem. Yes, I think it will be great. Uh, I, I cannot tell you about the time frame for this uh, report to be done because there are a number of other reports that we need to work on now, but um, I prepared the draft a very rough draft, and I just thought that it would be good to have some 
statistics in there to show the usage, you know, participation of uh, people in the courses and... Yeah, not a problem. Mm -hmm. We have another course that's going to be starting, okay, um, July 20th, and then our last uh, course that starts for 2015 will be August, October 19th. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll just remember to put you in both of those. Um, and then by chance you need more statistics for 2016, just send me an email mm -hmm. and I'll be able to just enroll you in those sections. Mm -hmm. that's, that's great. Okay. I will I will do it. And for, for this year, if you enroll me in whatever is coming up, that would be just fantastic. So maybe there will I'm be three not, three courses that are excuse me? Maybe I'll just take the course and you know <laughs> and I can remember that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Uh, you would uh, the math course. I have to admit is it well probably not for you because you're you're a data analyst, but it is kind of a struggle. There's a whole lot of stuff to actually do for for uh, people to actually complete the course. Uh, employability skills is more um, less about numbers and more about um, improving yourself. And PLA is about learning about how to actually like the concept of prior learning assessment and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, you're welcome to sign up the course. I'll sign you in as a instructor so you can actually get the, um, the analytics. So the end user experience is always the last one they take at the end of the five weeks. And the, the first one is the welcome is where you get all the demographics. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so you'll be able to get those for that. Um, we're gonna go ahead and go on to quarter two. It is the one that is running now, right? Uh, no, quarter, uh, yeah, quarter two is actually running now. Mm -hmm. uh, it just finished. It just mm -hmm. completed. Mm -hmm. um, and basically everything pretty much stays consistent. Um, we do get feedback from students. Like I, I think Heather got the feedback where we had a student who wrote in saying that he's already using, like testimonials basically, that they're already using this information in their courses. Uh, and we usually post that to Basecamp. I don't know if you're part of the Basecamp. Um, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. yes, and if you're not, I'll go ahead and post, uh, send you a couple of the emails that we get about the courses. Um, mm -hmm. So if it is in the base camp, I think I can access those. I, I received, for example, one was about a student who asked to to extend the access to the course. Yes. Is it is it the same base camp we're talking about? Yes. 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 Okay. Then I have access to it. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, okay. Um, so we can go ahead and do that. Um, so you should have that. And if you have any other questions, just give me a call because I keep everything and I can usually find everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, that's about what, one question I had when I was writing the, the brief is uh, future plans. I wasn't really sure uh, what, uh, so what is, what, how do you see the future of this uh, MOOC? And what I wrote is just, you know, if marketing is the one of the things that you want to do, probably, uh, to attract more participants. Is it true? We put this out on uh, the, because we're grant funded, right? We send the, the actual information out on when courses start um, to all the nine colleges that are part of the CHAMP grant. Um, in January, uh, the state, the Department of, the Colorado Department of ODEIT, I'll have to look up what the actual acronym for that is. I'm not sure what it is. They actually send it out uh, statewide like an email blast statewide. Uh, Canvas 
because we they uh, we tended to get a lot of participants in this, and as part of a STEM uh, pathway, Canvas themselves does blast emails um, usually about a month before the course starts. Uh -huh. And I can show you one of those that they actually send out uh, regarding the technical math MOOC. So the marketing is we always send it out to the nine colleges that are in the consortium. Um, Canvas usually sends out blast emails for technical math. Um, and it's also hosted, all the information is actually hosted on our website. So if you actually go to the website, so it tells them where they can actually sign up for it. So it talks about is where it's hosted on canvas.net and the start date. So it's okay. right there on the website. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. So we're we're gonna go ahead and go into the employability skills. Mm -hmm. And the first time this was actually run was last October. So as I'm doing this, do you have any other questions you needed to ask me? Uh, um, I think for now. Oh, also marketing, uh, uh, CAMA, which is the Colorado Advanced Manufacturing, I think it's association. They also uh, put it out to their um, members about the MOOC. Uh-huh. So it goes out through the colleges, through the CHAMP colleges, and the, the actual advanced manufacturing programs have it, the navigators have it, and most of the um, advisory group is supposed to actually have this information. Um, and then CAMA, the state actually put out something. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. And what role did the... Um, the adult, uh, adult and experiential learning council, what role did they play in this process? They, can you repeat the question again? I didn't quite understand it. Well, there is a council of adult and experiential learning, right? So what Correct. role did they play in developing MOOCs? Am I, am I correct saying that they contributed to them uh, to the prior learning assessment uh, MOOC? Not that I know of. That would be a bitsy question because she, no. Mm -hmm. uh, bitsy subgroup of the prior learning assessment, they developed the information for the PLA manual, all that kind of stuff. Bitsy herself developed the content for the prior learning assessment. Uh huh. Okay, okay, I see. Whereas okay. with like the technical math MOOC, we actually had faculty from, from both the Champ Colleges, Pikes Peak, Pueblo, uh, Front Range, Metro, which is the university, they their faculty contributed to, to the types of information they wanted on it as well as advanced manufacturing instructors. And then the actual, um, so they contributed to actually the content of it as well as we bought, we actually purchased content um, for um, the actual math delivery from NROC, National Repository of Online Courses, their Ed Ready product to actually deliver the content. Um, can you repeat the national, what is? 
repository of online courses, I think, NROC, N-R-O-C. It's the NROC project. Um, I see. Mm -hmm. And it's the EdReady product that we actually used to actually build the math stuff. Mm -hmm. For the employability skills, we actually based that build on, let me get the work out. Um, um, Colorado State Standards uh, did 21st century skills as well as the um, as um, well as the start at youth. Excuse me. For other workforce training. Uh, the 21st century skills draft that came out of um, the Colorado Standards 21st century skills transfer transformative teaching. So it came out of uh, Colorado Department of Ed. Um, their 21st century skills, as well as we actually did um, combine that with the report by EPI Economic Policy Institute on why claims of skill shortages in manufacturing is overblown, as well as um, information from the Workforce Center and our final, our final guide was the, digital, the skills gap, um, and then the Laura Lippman and Rachel Carney child trends. The Federal Reserve Bank of Boston put out uh, workforce connections uh, information. And that's what we also use. So we pulled from a lot of things about 21st century skills. And then what we did was we took that information back to the um, advisory group, manufacturing advisory group, and then asked the actual industry partners what was missing, like what did they see was missing in the, the new hires that they actually had. Um, and Wait, hold on. I don't remember if I just recorded this part. Um, the new hires that they had. Um, and so they also said, well, they need things like they need basic skills, like not using their phone on the shop floor and things like that. So they were very, very specific about what their new hires needed to have and what characteristics they wanted to develop internally for their employees that they wanted to move up the ladder. Because we had some uh, line employees that they wanted to actually move up into leadership roles, but they didn't have the training there in-house to be able to do that. So that's why we built uh, modules on uh, professionalism, um, team building, leadership, mm -hmm. and those came directly from the industry because they wanted to actually enroll some of their employees in this um, course so that they could actually say, okay, you know, let's put those skills to use and now let's move you up to a first line supervisor or something such as that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. And um, how would you characterize the model of the MOOCs that you have selected? I read each one, of... right, each oh. one is different. Um, because, oh, this one isn't, I can't get an end user survey from this one. This is weird. Um, hmm. I'm not sure why no one completed that one. Mm -hmm. There's no data for the end user for the quarter one. Um, so the very first one is definitely um, MOOC X. Information delivery, um, and that's pretty much it. Um, the employability skills is a combination of a MOOC X and a collaborative because you not only are learning the skills yourself, but you're asking to apply them in discussions with um, and find information to help you and help your classmates. 
-hmm. And the PLA is definitely a collaborative. There is a little bit of a MOOCX of about information delivery. Um, and so they're all self-paced, but it's all about how the students actually gain knowledge from their MOOCs. Mm -hmm. So PLA is probably the most collaborative because they have to read information, synthesize information, and then put their, their information out there on a discussion board and then respond and help your, the other students uh, find meaning on what actually um, is um, um, PLA, whereas with employability skills, it's pretty much uh, taking information, applying information, and putting it out there for your um, classmates to actually help you with or responding off of something that your classmate has actually done. So it's a definitely a hybrid model on that, whereas definitely the um, technical math MOOC is definitely a MOOC X where it's just Information delivery, self, um, self paced. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. And what is SMOOC? SMOOC is a smaller, massive online course because we're not we're not hitting the thousands. We're not even hitting a thousand because there's like different kinds of MOOCs. There's like the uh, the whole point of a, a massive online course is they were supposed to enroll between, you know, a couple of thousand to 10,000 people. We're not nearly at that level, so we are an SMOOC, which is a smaller, massively online course. Mm -hmm. Instead of an LMOOC, an LMOOC is a, is a, a large group. Okay. So it's not the module, it's just the size, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. Is there any anything you really want to be included in the brief uh, about the MOOC? Um. From unfortunately. From yeah, unfortunately, with the last two of the employability quizzes, we can't get to the information that's in that um, in that information for the end user experience, and that is actually kind of powerful because it talks about did you, did you meet meet their expectations? What were, what's their further use of this information? Um, and I think that's really important for higher ed to learn is while you're not getting completers. What you are getting is you're building a base of people who are actually looking at your MOOCs and accessing information, and maybe eventually they'll take that back to your college as in PLA. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, we're definitely meeting expectations for just the grant, uh, CHAMP grant because we are giving our specific students that are qual CHAMP affected access to a technical math MOOC that they can challenge out of a course. We're giving them employability skills. Um, and we're also giving the people who are faculty and administrators touched by the grant um, information that's gonna help them uh, with prior learning assessment and that kind of information. But if you look at the bigger picture, what we are is providing resources for those students who would otherwise not be touched by a program at the community college level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And we have many students, like um, in our last one, we had uh, Lawrence Duncan from the UK said he wished he was in the United States because he would come to Colorado and actually test out of our Math 108 so he could get college credit. Uh -huh. I mean, it's offering something like the avenue to actually earn college credit is not the traditional route, but it's still valued by um, Students. 
So we are at the prior learning already, right? Okay. Yes. We're in the very first one of the prior learning. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are some of the challenges that you had faced, you know, when you were developing? Part of it was technology, um, because the system actually has a contract with uh, an LMS, that the procedure to get a MOOC through that same contracted LMS was so arduous and so long that I chose to go to an outside vendor who had less, less uh, hoops to jump through to be able to get one through from course development to actual course running. Um, so that was kind of interesting. Um, so and then, less? excuse me? So it was Canvas, right? Right, Canvas is the one who said, oh, you wanted to run a MOOC? What's your idea? Great, by the end of the day, you'll actually have, um, you'll actually have your, um, your shell, you can develop it, and if you need instructional design help, we'll have it. The, mm -hmm. the biggest challenge is finding, because of the grant, finding open educational resources we could actually use in the, in the actual information mm -hmm. or the core group. Like, we either had to link out to free resources, we actually had to buy the NROC material that they allowed us to use as open source as long as it was in the Canvas platform or we actually had to uh, beg, borrow, and steal information to be able to build the content because there was no subject matter experts that were um, given to us because of the grant. You know what I mean? Mm hmm Yeah. Okay, and other than technical, any more challenges? Finding willing, um, instructors to actually moderate, like the um, technical math, I could not moderate because I know math, but I don't know enough to be able to answer students' questions. And again, finding instructors willing to donate their time to actually moderate the courses was interesting. Um, and they did it basically out of the goodness of their heart and because we asked. Um, it wasn't because they um, they would have done this normally. Most of them wanted to experience what um, a MOOC was like because they had heard about MOOCs and they were willing to actually step into the unknown without pay for it. Um, there is not a single person who volunteered to actually moderate the employability MOOC. That's why I had to tap Pete Lindstrom, my instructional designer, to actually moderate that. He's not a workforce expert, he's not a career coach, he's not a navigator, but it was one of the things where I need somebody to moderate this because I'm already moderating two other, providing technical assistance for all the three, plus actually overseeing two of the MOOCs. I need somebody else to share the load. He did that and it was with coaching like he had never taught an online course. So not only had he not taught an online course, he never taught a MOOC. So I actually had to teach him how to actually interact in a MOOC environment. So actually having somebody skilled enough and willing enough to even moderate, the, even though this is not an instructor-led course, but to moderate the actual MOOC as it was at times difficult. Yeah, I can imagine. So uh, none of the people who are doing it are being paid for, for it? Correct. Okay. So are you planning to try and find some resources to pay these people for their work? Because the grant budget was already set, uh -huh. um, I think the very first the very first semester the technical math MOOC was created. We paid the instructor to develop con content for it, but we could not pay them for facilitating it. Uh -huh. So because of the grant budget, it was never, like they included the language of having a MOOC and having three MOOCs and delivering the content through the MOOC, but whoever wrote the MOOC, the, the grant, did not actually factor that information in. 
Okay, but in terms of sustainability for the future, so are you planning to find some resources so you can, you know, at least compensate, you know, moderators and instructors for their time spent? Since we are a grant funded only entity, like Casey's group, when our money runs out on the grant, then unless we can actually move it to someplace else, it doesn't go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So I can, you know, I'm welcome, I can, we gave all the content for the employability MOOC to CAMA, and they, instead of choosing to actually run it as a MOOC or whatever, they've actually uh, taken the material, put it out in print format, and distributed it to their association. So unless, since you know we're a system with 13 independent colleges, but we're here at the system level with no actual resources, no funding other than grant funds, it's very hard for us to actually make this sustainable without it actually being a general fund item, which actually has to be legislated. Uh -huh. I see. Mm -hmm. So we could pass it on to a college, but then they, it would actually come out of their general fund dollars. And I don't know, right now there's no one who's saying, please give it to us that actually fills a need. They're all saying, give us the content and we'll run it on our own campuses, but not that they want to take over the management of a massive online course, which is pretty much the nature of a massive course. After three years, it should be turned over anyway. I don't think MIT actually runs a course longer than maybe three years. Uh -huh. So for now, you know that you will be offering these um, three courses this year in 2016 and beyond that? Our grant funding runs out um, the second quarter of 2017. So theoretically, I could still run two, two sessions in 2017, depending if we're meeting the needs of Consortium. I see. I see. Okay. Do you have any, I don't know, narrative report uh, that uh, I can look at? Um, on the MOOCs, because what I found so far, so what I based my um, my brief on is mainly the presentations that you made, the CHAMP project document, um, some conversations that were on the base come, but um, I didn't see any, you know, any narrative report. Is that such available? Give me more information on um, when you talk about what a narrative report is. What are you expecting? Uh, explanation of the history of MOOC development, uh, you know, basically the questions that I've already asked you. So what were the challenges? What are the successes? You mean for MOOCs in general or just MOOCs in Colorado? Uh, for MOOCs in Colorado, for, for these three MOOCs that you, you developed? There is nothing. We were, the, we were the pioneers for the whole system. The system had originally had tried to do one MOOC in the TAC-1 grant for developmental education, mm -hmm. and it only ran one year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure Heather has some kind of report. Um, for the TAC-1 grant on their one MOOC that they actually ran. Uh, uh, Colorado Community Colleges Online did it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see. So you're adding me, I see, right? Yes, I'm adding you to all three of the MOOCs that are going to start in July. Uh-huh. That's great. That will be good, you know, to, to see the show content. Who are those people? 
Uh, and most of the, in the technical math, you will have almost no contact with the other students because everybody just pretty much works at their own pace. Um, in the employability MOOC, um, you might get some kind of interaction in the discussions with um, some of the students. And then in the um, PLA, um, it'll probably be about 20% interaction with the students. Mm -hmm. okay. But you can actually see the content and how it's paced and what the expectations are in an actual MOOC. Like uh, the technical math is more of a traditional online course. The employability is definitely um, built more like a um, Mm, it's definitely a self um, choose what you want. It's kind of like a choose your own adventure book. It's just like I need this part and I need this part and I need this part and I don't care about any of the rest. Um, it, whereas um, the prior learning assessment is definitely um, sequenced learning where you build knowledge awareness, they're doing a couple of activities, and by the end of the course, they actually should have a great idea about um, prior learning assessment and how to actually implement that on their own college or see what they need to improve on their own, own college or university campus. But that is not the, that's the way it was built, but that's not the way people are actually using it. They're usually stopping right at the knowledge awareness and not actually going out and evaluating how they could do it at their own campus. Mm. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Okay. Um. Yes, I think so. Will we be able? Can I write you an email if I have any more questions or I need anything? Correct, or even call me. It's okay. perfectly fine. Yeah, I'm I'm good either way. You can either email me if you need it in writing, or you can just call me and um, I can give you that information. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's great. I'm trying to find that sheet so I can, I guess I'll just email it to you. I was trying to find the spreadsheet that I had sent um, uh, Heather so I can put the course numbers on there so you'll have it, but I'll actually have to find it. Okay. Okay, we'll appreciate it. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. It was so useful and you know helpful. It, I really, you know, I realized that I didn't understand a lot of things that um, I need to revisit my report now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm very glad that I had this opportunity to speak to you. Sure. And if by chance when you see the recording, because I'll send it to you, I'll, uh, I'll turn it into an MP4 so you can watch it anywhere, and I'll probably upload it to YouTube so that you can access it anywhere instead of just having the file. Um, but if by some chance you can't read something on that, don't hesitate to call me and say, I can't read in this course what this means. Mm -hmm. I will. I will definitely. I'm not sure yet or what exactly. I will be using from what you have shown, but I will definitely will be using at least okay. some information there. And okay. I think it will save me more than I I thought. So, you know, I expected. <laughs> was well, so you you did a great job complicating it, but that's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I could complicate things for you. <laughs> No, no, that's that, that's great. That will that will enrich, you know, whatever we are writing, and uh, that's the point, right? It's not just to describe the process, but also to show how it works and whether it works. Right, exactly, and whether and truly, and this is my own personal viewpoint. Um, MOOCs are often dismissed 
by faculty as, oh, that's a newfangled thing or, we're, you know, we're competing against ourselves or why, you know, why are we even doing this? But what they should be looking at is you're reaching out to your community to further learning and eventually that's going to pay off because you're going to have a better educated community, whether it's local, nationwide, or international. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because the very, yeah, the very first actual MOOC we had for the employability MOOC, a lot of our students came from Africa. And it was very interesting in the fact that we had to redesign the employability MOOC because it was definitely ethnocentric to North America. And some of the scenarios we had actually proposed made no sense to people in other countries. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So we had to actually rephrase some of our scenarios, and then our own students were like, oh, I don't understand why they're confused. And it's like, because their system is totally different. One of them, one perfect example was a um, a woman who had been to a university, was ended up uh, being hired on at the university to work in the library. And the way it was supposed to work is she was supposed to work as this one level for a year then once she learned that job, she was supposed to move up into another level for another year. And by the third year, she was supposed to become a fully whatever librarian or media specialist or whatever. Um, and then she was also supposed to have somebody who was that she was training in the year one, year two, year three. And what she ended up saying was, I don't know how to approach my boss or my administration. I've been stuck at level one for the last three years. And I know that's not right. But they say I'm so good at that job, they're not allowing me to move forward. And it was really quite interesting in um, a realization for our students that you don't always, like, there are ways to go about um, showing what you're worth. And there's a, a procedure for actually asking for things. And they were able to help her say, well, if I were you, I would approach it this way or that kind of stuff. So it was actually kind of interesting on how the community helped her work through an actual workplace issue that we had not actually addressed in in class. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a very good example. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so I mean... I'm teaching your course as well. <laughs> <laughs> Actively taking it, not just observing. Right, right. I mean, it was totally interesting. It was just like, that's the power of learning. Like, I understand we're grant funded. I understand we're advanced manufacturing. I understand that we're a community college only in Colorado. But truly, if we truly believe in a well-educated population worldwide, this is what we need to do to make ourselves better, to make our place better. You can't put a dollar profit on everything <laughs> as much as we want to. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you so much, Brenda. If Absolutely. You me or you have any questions, please let me know anytime. Okay. I'm not sure, um, but I will. <laughs> No problem, no problem. It was a joy to talk to you, and I'm glad, like I said, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. If you want to ask something that is not even relevant to whatever we talked about today, don't hesitate to ask, and I should get that link to you by the end of today. Okay, thank you so much. Uh Uh-huh, you have a good day. Bye, you too. All right, Bye. bye.